Thanks very much, Angelina. Um, I'm Yul Herbert, our principal at SSG. Good morning. I'm Marcus Williams, the principal of What If Technologies. And we're very pleased and excited to take the wraps off me, the Municipal Energy and Emissions Database. Um, in today's presentation, we will um, help you to understand Mead, um, describe who's behind it, what it offers, and why it matters. We'll give a quick and dynamic show and tell of how it works, and we'll address any questions that you might have. Mead is a collaboration between SSG and What If Technologies. SSG is a national planning cooperative that has been working with municipalities for more than two decades, primarily in Canada, but also in the US and now in Chile. Marcus. Oh, right. Sorry. I'm uh, so I'm Yule's counterpart at uh, What If, and we're a, a database and scenario modeling uh, firm. Uh, we have a focus on energy and environment, and uh, we're Canadian. We're employee owned. Uh, we started in Ottawa more than 30 years ago, and now we have uh, team members across Canada. And we would like to acknowledge the support of Natural Resources Canada, um, which provided funding for the initial development of Mead through its geospatial um, funding program called GeoConnections. What does Mead offer? It's an open access database that provides a free GHG inventory for every community in Canada. And I think that's a game changer for climate action planning um, because every city, town and village can now access uh, me to, to obtain a, a community carbon pollution profile that shows where the greenhouse gas emissions come from and how much they produce. And it's the first time that we've had a consistent inventory um, for all municipalities across Canada. With the, this information, a local government can apply for funding, um, also start rolling out programs to regulate and incentivize climate solutions like EV charging stations or building retrofits based on the information you can get in Mead. While it's valuable for every community in Canada, it's particularly valuable for the small and medium-sized municipalities and those who are just getting started in climate action planning so that they can catch up quickly um, without investing a lot of staff time or money. What does Mead actually do? Um, if you're here, you probably already know that local governments are critical to Canada's climate response. They have jurisdiction or, or direct or indirect influence over more than 50% of the greenhouse gas emissions in the country. Um, and increasingly, um, um, every municipality is experiencing the impacts of climate change on infrastructure, on the local economy, on quality of life. And there are so many examples from the last six months um, alone. And if people in your community are not already calling for action, um, I believe they probably will be very soon. Mead will be in particular a value to small and medium sized communities that don't have the same resources that large cities do. And these communities actually really matter. 92% um, of the communities in Canada have populations below 10,000. They are home to about 16% of Canada's population overall, but account for almost a third of Canada's emissions. Um, this picture is of, of Lunenburg um, in Nova Scotia. And um, this is an exact, exact example of a municipality that can use Mead to jumpstart its climate response. Mead is free um, on the web right now, and it provides the critical information um, required to just get going. This is an illustration of a typical climate action planning journey for a community in Canada. There are six steps, um, preparation, taking stock, which usually involves a greenhouse gas emissions inventory, setting a target, identifying actions, implementation, and finally monitoring and evaluation. The greenhouse gas emissions inventory is the second step and is generally a bottleneck um, for most municipalities and also a barrier. Typically local governments hire uh, consultants to develop their inventories, which, and, and we sometimes undertake those projects. They can be complex, laborious, and costly, um, costing somewhere between 10 and 40,000, and they often take months. In a climate emergency, we don't have time to um, spend another six months on inventories and Mead really is designed to address this problem. Now everyone has access to consistent inventories and therefore can move quickly to take action. Um, in addition to the need, the urgent need for speed um, on inventories, we also spent a lot of time ensuring that the need is high quality and is aligned with the current best practices. Um, we built Mead on an accounting framework called the Global Protocol for Community Scale Greenhouse Gas Emissions Inventories, and that's the international best practice at the moment. It was developed by C40, a network of large cities taking action on climate change, 
World Resources Institute, and ICLEI. Um, and it really is the standard for how municipalities should account for greenhouse gas emissions. So by using GPC, we align with international best practices and ensure that municipalities are all speaking the same GHG language, as it were, with others around the world. And it enables municipalities in Canada to directly report to the Global Covenant of Mayors, which is the, the preeminent global community of uh, communities taking action on climate change. So I'd like to speak briefly to how Mead is built with respect to data sources. Um, so if you think about the Mead database here in the middle, from the bottom up, we're using localized data, uh, such as the census from StatCan, along with the uh, business register, which, hel which helps us locate workers across Canada. We're using uh, large emitting facilities data from, in from Environment Canada and weather station data, um, rail network data from NRCAN. And then from the top down, um, national and provincial sources, we're using uh, things like waste generation from StatCan, um, detailed energy use from NRCAN, and um, the national inventory report from, from Environment Canada. So the, through the combination of bottom up and top down, uh, we're, we're estimating energy and emissions for every one of um, Canada's uh, 4,000 plus communities. So why would you use Mead in your climate action planning? There are three reasons we've identified and, and probably you'll identify more. Um, firstly, it's transparent. So local government can you compare its emissions with those of similar sized communities and, and indeed any community across Canada and do so knowing that it's comparing apples to apples with a consistent methodology. It's robust. Um, we use a globally recognized standard as I have indicated and it's free. Um, functionality you see today will always be free um, and a local government can use these insights for applying for funding or, or developing policies or regulations. Um, we do want to note, however, that we reserve the right to add more features that may involve a cost in the future. Okay, so I'm gonna jump into a, a quick live demo of the platform. I'm gonna switch over to uh, my browser here. And... This is the, uh, the opening page. Um, we've sort of nicknamed it the, uh, the screensaver for those of you uh, who remember those. And it, what it does is it cycles um, between different uh, Canadian communities showing population and, and emissions. So if you, if you stay long enough, you get a, a mini geography lesson. Uh, I'm gonna scroll down and there's some, some intro uh, information about Mead, but I'm going to quickly jump to the communities index. And you will show an image of um, Lunenburg in Nova Scotia. So I'll open the, the list for Nova Scotia, scroll down a bit. And there are actually two Lunenburgs. One is a, uh, a district and the other is a town. So I'll, I'll click on the town. So Mead gives us um, a little zoom in to Lunenburg and then some, um, some key stats around population area, median household income. So stats from, from StatCan. But I'm going to go over to the emissions section and this is a summary. There's a, there's a lot to take in here. So don't worry, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll break it down and step through it with you. Starting on the left, um, these are the major uh, sectors or categories of emissions. So stationary energy from, from buildings, uh, transportation emissions um, from you know, mobile emissions from vehicles, uh, waste emissions from solid waste or from uh, wastewater. There are a couple other um, categories here from the protocol that uh, Mead doesn't currently estimate, but we may do so in the future. And then at the bottom, there is the total uh, emissions for the community and emissions per capita, which can be a useful indicator for comparing across communities. And then moving to the right, we have the, uh, it's a visualization, uh, we've, we've called it the double donut and the inner layer of the donut uh, these are the categories or the sectors we just described above. So stationary, transportation, and waste. And then the outer layer is a further breakdown of, uh, of those categories. So stationary energy broken down into residential, commercial and institutional, manufacturing and industry, and so on. So I'm just going to take a, a moment to do a sort of a mini analysis on this. So what we're seeing in this community is almost 75% of the stationary energy um, or of the emissions are associated with stationary um, energy. So in the background, Mead um, knows that in Nova Scotia, um, 
something like the, the, the requirement for space heating and water heating, a lot of that is, is provided through uh, heating oil and through um, electricity. Uh, the electricity uh, from the Nova Scotia grid is fairly high emitting. It's, uh, it's based on a lot of coal and uh, uh, fuel oil electricity generation. If we were to compare this to uh, communities in let's say uh, Quebec, uh, we'd see that portion of, of emissions from, st from stationary uses being quite a bit uh, smaller. And that's, that's because uh, Quebec has a lot more heating from um, electricity and that electricity in turn is provided from uh, quite, a, quite a clean grid uh, from hydropower. So just to then uh, just take one more step and, and start to explore, well, what are the types of um, actions that a municipality could, could start to uh, strategize based on, on this inventory? Um, I would say for this community in, 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 no in Nova Scotia, Lunenburg, they could look to replace uh, a lot of their um, boilers and furnaces that use heating oil with efficient um, uh, heat pump based uh, uh, electrical uh, heat pumps. Um, and then in combination with that to, to green their supply of electricity uh, with uh, local solar PV installations. And at the same time, um, along with other municipalities in Nova Scotia, lobbying their provincial government to decarbonize the, uh, the grid. Just before uh, I conclude, um, I wanna show one more, one more part of this, which is the GPC reports. So this is uh, more of a, a, a tabular report that can be used to, uh, to submit to various uh, uh, bodies. And it has the same sorts of sectors here, uh, different scopes, and, um, and then there's an even more detailed report that comes along and, and has little pop-outs and overlays and explanations of the various categories. So with that, I'm going to turn it, um, yeah, I guess to, to the question period. Thank you for listening. And uh, Angelina, uh, I guess I, I turn it back over to you. Thank you, Marcus.